everyone, welcome back to the Microburst 600 side-by-side -side build. Had a couple of good shakedown runs like you saw. Uh, pretty much everything's working good. Uh, there's some issues with the chain tensioner I'm going to talk about later. But right now what I want to do is start working on all the paneling for this. So I have the, have the wheel pulled off in the front and I want to start working on this area in here. Get some paneling on. I've already made a bunch of cardboard templates quite some time ago so I just gotta sort out what's what here and then uh, I have some some of these plastic panels for the smaller sections got a bunch of these and then for the large sections I have this large sheet of uh, four by eight uh, it's a, like a black plastic stuff okay so I'm just gonna start uh, cutting it out and bolting it on Okay, so I've been real busy working away on all these panels and uh, well, this is where it's at right now. I ran out of plastic, so I'm just kind of waiting, but I'll show you what I have. So up inside here, the front bulkhead is all taken care of. A lot of little pieces to cut around there, especially on the, on the other side here with all the pedals and everything. So that's taken care of. And then as you can see, I have the side panels on. All the, all the interior panels here are done. So I have my little glove box area down in here. So lots of storage, another glove box up in there. And then I started working on this rear firewall. It's not secured yet, but I have everything cut out. Just need to get that secured. I want to find someone that can do like, um, I think it's called bead rolling, where they put some grooves or lines or something in it, just to give this a bit more strength so it doesn't wobble and vibrate too much. So yeah, that's it. So I ran out of plastic. I'm just waiting for some more to come in. And then I'll finish all the other pieces back off in here, inside the motor area and stuff like that. All right, so while I was waiting, I took care of a couple other things. First thing off is uh, I made these little T-handles here, and that's for, for all the passengers, and they'll slide, they slide right into there, and of course it's all adjustable. All right, so that'll give people handles to hold on to. And I picked up these uh, bicycle grips, so I'm gonna slide those guys over too. Nice foam grips. And then the other thing I worked on, um, I changed the gear ratios on this. So I did a speed test, and when I was when I was running at 85 kilometers an hour in sixth gear, the motor was revving at 10 grand. So um, yeah. So anyway, I'm gearing gearing it up a little bit. So this was the sprocket that I originally had coming off the motor. That was a 24 tooth. So I stepped it up to a 28 tooth. So that's going to get me to about six and a half to one. And then the other thing I changed up, this was the idler sprocket or the roller that I had. And it just wasn't holding up the way I thought. And it was really, really noisy in there. So I took it off and I just went ahead and put a, a sprocket on there. So we'll see how that goes. So I just have to get this stuff installed and then I can finish up with that firewall. Okay, I'm in a bit of a jam here, folks, and I'll show you what's going on. When I took this for a drive, there's some oil and a little bit of antifreeze leaking. So the antifreeze was coming from this hose. Um, there was a crack down in there, and uh, it was leaking out antifreeze. So I got a brand new hose in there. I'll just back this up so you can see what side I'm on. So it goes from the water pump up to the top of the cylinder block. So anyway, that was no big deal. So I ordered a new seal because this thing was leaking oil and I went to pop it out, which is why you see it's all mangled. But it turns out there's actually a lip here on the motor and I'll show you a picture in a minute. So you actually cannot remove this seal from the outside. You have to split your motor in half or take the whole clutch assembly out and replace it from there. So what I thought was going to be a real quick job just turned into a huge nightmare. And anyway, I'm going to show you a picture on the internet there of what this thing actually looks like so you see what I'm talking about. Okay, folks, here's what I'm talking about. Let's see how close I can zoom in on this. But you see right here, there's your seal. And you see this little lip right there? Well, that's the lip that's preventing the seal from popping out. 
So the correct way to do this, like I said, you're supposed to split this whole case in half and then pull this seal out. Now, I did a little bit of reading and what somebody said that they've done, because this seal actually is a, a, a press-in, what they've done is you can grind this lip off, press that seal in, and then what they've done, just to add a little, well, a little bit of peace of mind, fill this back in around the edge here with some RTV silicone. I think I'm gonna do that. There's no way I'm pulling this motor out, splitting this thing in half, taking the transmission out and whatever, just to replace this oil seal. So I'm gonna grind this lip off and we're gonna try and do that. seal it's in there I'm gonna put a bead of uh, put a bead of RTV silicone around the edge here and uh, well we'll see time will tell I guess all right I finished installing that seal that was a bit of a pain but uh, anyway it's in there it's all good now um, so I finished reassembling everything and I have my uh, my drive sprockets back in place so this is the new 28 tooth so that's going to give me about a six and a half to one final gear ratio. So hopefully that'll help uh, lower lower the RPMs a little bit. Anyway, I'm just test fitting uh, for this new chain here. I went out and bought a, I think it's called a Easy Link or an X Link. Uh, anyway, it's some kind of premium O-ring chain. Uh, so that'll be a much better chain than that Princess Auto one that I had. So I'm just figuring out the length. I'm going to get it cut. And then I'll rivet the master link in, tighten the tensioner up, and then this thing will be ready. Maybe take it for a little test drive or something. Oh yeah, let's get this buttoned up. Okay, folks, I was doing some testing with uh, the new chain tensioner, the chain, and this thing is really noisy. So I took a good look at it, and what I realized is this mounting uh, bar right here isn't exactly square with the chain because it rides off this bar, and this thing isn't perfectly straight either. Um, so what's happening is that idler uh, sprocket was basically at an angle rubbing against this uh, that was one of the problems. So anyway, I pulled the whole thing apart. The other problem is this bearing is pretty much done already. And like I was just, I drove around the block a couple times. I revved it up a bit here. It's not a very expensive bearing. It was just a, it was on sale at Princess Auto. So 
this is generating a lot of noise. This is generating a lot of noise because it's in there cockeyed. So what I'm going to do is I took the mounting plate off and I'm, you can see it in there. I have this thing angled. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my face mill here and I'm just going to cut this thing at an angle to get this plate here realigned in there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to call up the uh, the bearing store and I'm going to see if I can get a, a larger diameter bearing, something that can take the load a little bit better um, and a much higher quality uh, higher quality bearing, something that can take real high RPM. And then I'm going to redo this and I'm going to up the size on this idler sprocket as well because with this guy being so large, this sprocket, uh, the reduction in here, this guy is just spinning like mad. So I'm going to put something a little bit bigger on there. I'll step that up. Uh, that's a 12 tooth right now. Maybe I'll go somewhere around, I don't know, 20. Well, maybe not that big. Maybe around 16 or 18. So that'll slow this down a little bit. Coupled with a, a larger diameter, higher quality bearing. We'll get that thing straight in there. And hopefully we'll get some of the noise out of this chain tensioner. All right, let's make a few cuts. 